Welcome to the Creek Road Baptist Pulpit. These weekly podcasts feature expository messages delivered to edify the soul. Now let's join Pastor Dave as he presents this week's message. And take your Bible and turn with me to the book of Psalms. And you want to find your way to Psalm 136. Psalm 136. We're going to talk about Thanksgiving today. What is it? What is Thanksgiving? What's it mean? How do we use it? So we're going to try to define Thanksgiving. We're going to do that first, and then we'll turn to Psalm 136 and see what Psalm 136 has to say about the subject of Thanksgiving. The subject of Thanksgiving. To give you an idea of this word Thanksgiving, I brought one of my favorite books with me today. This is called A Gift Bear for the King, and I uh, had to go scrounging through my son's library to find this. Actually, this was mine when I was a little boy, and I opened it up last night and saw my mother's handwriting in the, in the front cover, and uh, that was a blessing. She, always, she, would always write the, she would always write my name on the front cover, and then she would always write my name on the title page of these books that she bought for me. And so I grew up reading this book, and then, of course, when my boys were little, I read them this book. And it's about a little bear who lived with an old man and an old woman who they lived in the forest. And this little bear was their favorite friend, and he did all kinds of things. And then one day, a man came from the king, and he announced that it was the king's birthday. And the old man and the old woman wanted to send the king a gift, but they didn't have anything to sin, and so the gift bear said, well, just send me. Of course, the gift bear can talk. So here he is, and he says, oh, just send me. I'm I'm a good gift. And I won't read you the whole book, but he goes on the, they put a little tag on his collar that says, um, happy birthday. Yeah, a little tag on his collar says, happy birthday. So they send him off to the king, to the palace, and they say, now don't be late. You hurry along, and you get to the king. And you tell him that you're from us. So along the way, he runs into people that need help. There's a circus that needs help with an acrobatic act. And there's a, an innkeeper that needs help. He, has some, he needs somebody to wash dishes. And there's children at a schoolhouse that need help because they don't have a teacher. And so by the time he ends up at the palace, he's late. He's months late. And so um, eventually, he gets to the palace and the guards say, well, this is, this is a trick because you're late, months late. We're going to put you in the dungeon. So they put him in the dungeon, and here's the poor gift bear in the dungeon, and he's singing his song. He sings a song all the way through the book. It's, I'm a gift bear for the king. I won't stop for anything. And he sings this little tune. When he gets in the dungeon, he changes his little song to a sad song. He says, I was the gift bear for the king. Uh, but I stopped for everything. Once I was glad, and now I am sad. Look up here in the king's look, locked up here in the king's dungeon. Well, it just so happens that some birds, I think they're bluebirds. Are they just birds? They're no, they're bluebirds. They heard his song, and so they start singing the gift bear's sad song. Well, all his friends heard the sad song of the gift bear, so they go to the king. And I'll, I'll start reading right here on page 42. At last, one day, the dungeon door opened. The captain of the guard came in. And then the king himself came in. Next, the innkeeper came in. Then the school children. And then all of Gift Bear's circus friends. Gift Bear, his friends told him, We heard the bluebirds sing your song. So we came to tell the king why you were late. Good, little, helpful gift bear, said the king. I didn't even know you were here. I want to thank the old man and the old woman for sending you, said the king. Can you take me to them? The king asked gift bear. I can, said gift bear. Do you know the way? Said the king. I do, said gift bear. And they all went down the road until they came to the hut in the forest. Gift bear and the king went in. The king said to the old man and the old woman, A thousand thanks for the finest gift ever sent a king. I want you to live in the palace with Gift Bear and me, the king said. Will you come? They will, said Gift Bear. What must be, must be. 
So that's the story of the gift bearer and the king. And the reason I chose this is because the king, after receiving the gift bearer, he says to his friends and all the people gathered there, I want to thank the old man and the old woman for sending you. So what is, what is the king going to do when he goes and gives thanks for this gift? Let's talk about this morning what it means, because I think this is a good illustration of how our modern-day Thanksgiving is, is figured and also how it is flawed a little bit. And we'll talk about that as we go through the sermon today. So when the gift bearer goes off to the king, we have in that idea the subject, who is the one doing the action, and that's the king. We have the verb, which is thankfulness or thanking. So we have the verb. And then we have the object, the old man and the old woman in the forest, because they're the ones who did the sending. So the king, the verb, the thankfulness, and the old man and the old woman who did the sending. So let's talk about that for a moment. I'm going to put the book down. I'll just set it up right here so you can see it. <clears throat> and I would recommend this book if you haven't ever read this to your children or grandchildren. This is a fun one. This is a fun one to read. This is not very long. So the king. We have always Thanksgiving starts with somebody, right? There are usually two people involved when giving thanks. The subject who's the one who's doing the thanking. And so in this case, it's the king. And we have the thankfulness. That is the action. It's gratefulness or thankfulness. And so we have the king being grateful for gift bear or thankful for gift bear. But we also have the circus, the school children, and the innkeeper, as well as the king. But thankfulness is always based on something done, okay? So there's always a because with thankfulness. Something has happened. There's always a for with thankfulness. When the king in the story says, I want to go and thank the old man and the old woman for sending you. So he's thanking them because they did something. So thankfulness is always in response to something that has happened, something that's been done. Husbands, if you ever say to your wives, or wife, if you ever say to your husbands, or if you ever say it to anybody in your life, thank you, they might look at you and say, for what? Because that's a natural response to the statement, thank you, right? Well, why are you thanking me? There's always a because with thank you. The old man and the old woman in this case are thanked because they sent gift bear to the king. The gift bear not only went to the king, but he went to the circus and became an acrobat and helped the circus out. The circus didn't close because of gift bear. He went to the school and he taught the children because they didn't have a teacher, so they're thankful that he taught. When the teacher came, he moved on. He stopped by the inn. The innkeeper said, I don't have anybody to wash dishes. I'm going to have to close if I can't find somebody to wash my dishes. And so Gift Bear did that. So the innkeeper was thankful for Gift Bear because he washed the dishes. So thankfulness always depends on the action of someone else. But most of the time, we stop right there. We have the subject, the action of thanking, and the object receiving the action in our normal idea of gift giving. I thank my wife for cooking me breakfast. I thank my wife for cooking me dinner. I thank my son for, you know, giving me the gift I got at Christmas time. But see, that's as far as we usually take thankfulness. But that's why I say it's flawed because we need to take it one step further. We need to go to the source. With every thanksgiving, there is always more. Now let's look at Psalm 136. Psalm 136, I just completed teaching this psalm on Daily Dose Radio a couple of weeks. Has it been a week ago? Well, I guess last week and the week before last, I did Psalm 136. It's called the Great Hallel. And it's called that because the Jews saw this psalm as the greatest expression of praise. Hallel is the Jewish word for praise. It's where we get our word hallelujah from. We just add that little ya on the end, which is 
the shortened form of the theophoric name, God's name. And so when you translate that, you pr- translate it, praise the Lord. Well, Hallel means to praise. And the Jews called it the great Hallel. The church picked this up, and they saw in this psalm the Trinity. Let's just look there. You're looking at Psalm 136. Let's just look at the Trinity part. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy is everlasting. O oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. Now, do you notice something about this psalm? It has a unique character to it, doesn't it? Because you have the first phrase in the couplet of each verse is something different, and then the second phrase in the latter couplet of each verse is the same for his mercy endureth forever i'm going to say everlasting because that's the way i translated it for daily dose radio so if i if i mess that up uh, i may do it unconsciously this psalm as you see how it goes you see the flow of it is a um is a responsive psalm as a matter of fact uh, this psalm has been recited Well, let's just do it together. I'll read the first part of those three verses, the first line, and then we'll read responsively that second line, his mercy endureth forever. Okay, let's do that. Verses 1, 2, and 3. Here we go. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. O give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. That's very good. Now, what you just did, that responsive, was done in the first temple that Solomon built. It was done in the second temple that Nehemiah and Ezra built. It was done in Jesus' day in the temple that stood in Herod's time that he, that he improved upon. It was done in the synagogues of the Jews all around the world. It was picked up by the church and done by the early church in early church worship. It was then modified and used by the medieval church in church worship, in monastic worship, and in all other forms of worship in the medieval church. And it is still done today in Orthodox churches and churches just like ours all around the world and also in synagogues all around the world. This is one of the most ancient forms of worship and one of the most ancient poems used in worship right here. And what you just said with your lips has been said going all the way back to Solomon's temple. Is that not cool? Yeah. So when we worship the Lord, we are connected when we use this psalm. We are connected with all of that past, spanning from Solomon's temple, coming all the way into the present, right today, whatever today is, November the 6th, 2016. And we say, his mercy endures forever. How wonderful. Congregations worldwide today sing this hymn. But you'll notice that we have the subject here of thanksgiving in these three verses. Oh, give thanks is repeated once, twice, three times in the beginning of this psalm. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy is everlasting. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy is everlasting. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy is everlasting. And as we look at Psalm 136, what I want to explain is, that Psalm 136 shows us something about the source of thanksgiving. We talked about the subject. We've talked about the action of thanksgiving. We've talked about there's always a because with thanksgiving. We've talked about the object who receives the thanks, but there's something more. There's something yet left out of our modern-day conception of thanks, and that is the source behind all things. And Psalm 136, beginning with thanks, tells us about that source. Look with me then at the remainder of this psalm. Verses 4 through 9. We have thankfulness 
here in creation. You see, thankfulness does not end with the person, that is the object, who receives the thanks. 